My name is Beth. I am the community programming librarian for the Mid-Continent Library System. And I wanna welcome you to this evening's program, Cook Once, Serve Twice. A um, Couple of upcoming programs that I wanted to mention, and then we'll have a few housekeeping items before we get started with the program. Um, this program this evening is a hybrid program. So we have people online and also uh, with us here in the branch at Lee Summit. So um, I am gonna ask if you have questions or you wanna respond to our presenters questions during the program this evening that you type them in chat so that uh, we can repeat them for the people in the room, uh, as well as um, for everybody online. Um, we do have a couple of upcoming programs. Uh, one is Tuesday, November 29th at 2 p.m. It is also on Zoom. We have a radio historian, Steve Darnell, who will be doing a program called Radio Goes to War. It's about World War II and how radio was used for the first time for news, presidential speeches, to boost morale and more. So if you're a history buff, that's a good program. Um, one that's maybe a little bit um, more in line with our topic this evening, on Wednesday, November 30th at 7 p.m. on Zoom, we have a culinarian um, who will be doing a program called Mary Berry Celebration, cooking with berries throughout the holiday season. And she will be talking about how to use fresh, frozen, free dried, freeze dried, dried berries and more for your holiday menu as well as everyday cooking. So I think she will have lots of great recipes to share. I've seen some pictures of the desserts. Um, but with that, I'm going to um, share our screen here and turn it over to Denise Sullivan with MU Extension for tonight's program, Cook Once, Serve Twice. Hi everyone, welcome this evening. Um, as Beth said, I am Denise Sullivan. I'm a nutrition and health education field specialist with MU Extension, and I serve the Urban West region, which is basically the Kansas City area, uh, primary coverage in Jackson County, but extended coverage into Platte County. Uh, working with me in this, uh, this uh, field is my colleague Melissa Cotton, who is currently on maternity leave, but we share uh, programming opportunities with uh, MCPL across the metro and she'll be back work with us uh, at work with us later this year. So uh, just a little bit about me. I've been with MU Extension for almost six years. Prior to MU, I act, I worked for uh, extension in Kansas through Kansas State University. And even before that, uh, began my extension career in Texas as a 4 youth development agent and working with Texas A&M University. So I always like to give our little, uh, you know, elevator speech about extension. It is a, a partnership between the land grant institution, USDA, and then uh, uh, local extension councils. So wherever you go across the country, there is an extension program uh, based out of the land grant system. So uh, today's uh, topic is cook once, serve twice, or as I like to say, cost meals, cost effective meals. And uh, so we're gonna just hopefully leave here today. There's my little cost cook one, serve twice. Uh, leave here today with some ideas on um, just how we can make food preparation in general, easier, more efficient, uh, and just maybe take some, some burden off of both our, you know, our uh, grocery bill, our energy bill, maybe our personal energy or our actual energy uh, that, that fuels our, our house and our appliances. We'll talk about ways that we can even streamline that. So my first uh, question, you know, to everyone, those here in the room, and you know those of you in Zoom, and I'd like you to just, as Beth said, you know, give us your feedback in the chat of what is your biggest mealtime frustration. 
and and that'll help me kind of make sure that we're getting uh you know that if i'm not on target with where your frustrations are that i can kind of wrap those in so biggest mealtime frustrations okay um we have several listed we've got a uh, shopping time restraints cooking for one and eating leftovers days later i feel that one <laughs> as well as prep time too many ingredients and time okay i think i think you've come to the right place i think i'm on the right track with uh with what uh we hope to uh, have you know cover tonight and uh so here's kind of what i'm hoping that we are able to do you know these are some of the advantages as i said to cost cooking once served twice saving time and energy um i think we can all agree that there's a time crunch uh and and it it seems like you would you know we would think that as we go through different phases of life that we might see some changes within that, but I'm not sure that's true. I think everybody uh, might be in a time crunch and or just appreciates being able to to utilize their time and their energy, like I said, both personal energy. And as we think about, you know, the energy that fuels our homes. Uh, I don't know about you, but my utility bills have been going up and I find myself looking for ways that I can maybe trim that, uh, that utility bill down. Um, so both the energy that's fueling my home and my personal energy, because I, I get tired easy, it seems. Um, saving money is, is good for anyone, particularly as we look at those grocery, the prices in the grocery store, and we don't see a whole lot of uh, relief uh, from that. Um, someone mentioned leftovers. I'm a I'm a firm believer. I think that I think sometimes leftovers can taste better the second time around. I think there are certain things like that. I you know I think chili, uh, a lot of our soups. Um, if there's some of your favorites that you think uh, taste better second time around, love to have you you know share that. This if we if we approach this cook once, serve twice, uh, in a very deliberate and intentional. Uh, fashion, I think we can find that we will have a greater variety of foods and maybe get out of that rut of just doing the same old, same old, and hopefully then relieving that mealtime boredom. And uh, even, you know, as we think about that whole leftovers and, and day after day uh, kind of things, hopefully we can examine some possibilities uh, that can help to relieve that. So I always do like to start off with just a reminder of, of the my plate and hopefully this looks familiar. Hopefully this is, is not uh, uh, anything that's new uh, to anyone, but I do, I do like to just mention um, as a nutrition educator uh, over the last 30 years, um, this is, I think that we finally got it right with kind of what, what I refer to as our teaching icon that we utilize through our nutrition programming. Um, Food pyramid, a lot of people remember that, version one, version two. Uh, a lot of times people, you know, the, at least in the nutrition world, we would talk, to, uh, kind of joke about uh, that version two of the pyramid just looks like they tipped it over and everything fell out. Um, but uh, I think we really got it right with the my plate. You know, we don't, we don't eat out of a pyramid, but we eat off a plate. And so uh, that's the thing I do love about this, this teaching icon. And several specialized plates have been kind of modeled after, uh, after this. But when we think about just my plate in general, you know, half of that plate should be, you know, we should strive to be having fruits and vegetables. And then even, uh, you know, another fourth of that is also plant foods, uh, you know, grains and particularly whole grains, if we can get those whole, more of those whole grains into our diet. And when we, we think about uh, what's happening with that, uh, with food consumption uh, habits, one of the things that we do know through research is that we're, we're falling way short of, of that intake of where we need to be on those fruits and vegetables. Um, only 10% of, of adults eat the recommended servings of vegetables and a little bit more than that at 12% um, eat a little, you know, the the recommended amounts of fruits so we've really got some some work to do to think about in terms of nutritional quality and again as we think about this through a, through that that planning lens of how we can maximize 
our food dollar and our, our time that we put into uh, our meal planning, hopefully we can strive to get more towards this, uh, this goal of having half our plates fruits and vegetables. Because we do know that that is a diet high in fruits and vegetables is very key in prevention of a lot of chronic illnesses. So uh, that's, that's the reason that, uh, you know, we hopefully are just a little bit more intentional about that. So to try and get us into a good way, a good habit of uh, trying to build that, that healthy plate and do it in a, a cost-effective manner, it all really starts with planning. And I've given you, you should have received by email, um, those of you out in virtual land, you should have received uh, some handouts uh, and that are gonna be kind of your roadmap to utilizing you know, this format or this plan. Um, these come from our Choose My Plate or the MyPlate.gov website, your, your handouts tonight. And if you've never visited the MyPlate.gov website, or if you haven't visited in a long time, I would really, really encourage you to do that because even as I check in there pretty regularly, um, you know, there, I, I, I'm constantly noticing updates. And so these are just a few of the tools that are out there that, uh, that can uh, help you. Also, as you go to the myplate.gov uh, website, I always want to mention too, along with, in fact, I'm gonna even back up. When we think about MyPlate and the Dietary Guidelines for Americans, uh, we, I, I ought to kind of talk about those hand in hand because they, they do work together in terms of the, the work that uh, we do in, in uh, nutrition education through extension. That's kind of the basis or the, the groundwork for our educational programming. One of the things we were discussing at uh, one of the branches yesterday when I was doing this program is I always like to ask people, do you feel like things are changing? You know, are they, are they saying different things all the time? And a lot of people are like, yeah, yeah. Um, and I, that's where I like to remind people that nutrition is grounded in science. It's based in the sciences. And in science, we do research and in research, we learn new things. And so if you feel frustrated, by the fact that they say, you know, things are always changing as far as what's good for you. Um, just remember, it's science. And, and that's what research uh, institutions like, you know, like MU, like K-State, uh, like the other land grants across the, the country where they're doing research. And even, you know, even educational institutions that are not land grant institutions that are doing research in nutrition and health that's what goes into that framework of the dietary guidelines for Americans. And they are updated every five years as we learn new research. And the most recent edition, then you can find all 200 and some copies or pages of it uh, on the myplate.gov uh, website to learn about some of the, the research that's happening and what's guiding those guidelines. But the uh, most recent one we are working under is the 2020, so came out at the end of 2020, because we know what we all know what happened in 2020. Everything slowed down for a little bit. But uh, the 2020 to 2025 version of the dietary guidelines did come out late in 2020. And if we look at the calendar, we can see we're about halfway through. So uh, they're already starting to gather the science and the research of what's going on to see what might what might come with the next edition that would be due out in 2026 or so. So thinking about planning. Um, so like I said, you know, the, the, the guide sheets that I've given you do come from the MyPlate website. And um, I gave you the, to start out with the one on planning because every good, every good you know, plan, every good activity starts with a good plan, right? So it really starts with knowing as you plan those meals to be more efficient, you know, and utilizing uh, the foods that you have on hand, that's where you start. What do you have on hand? What's in the pantry? What's in the freezer? What's in the refrigerator that maybe is gonna, you know, start needs to be used quickly. Otherwise we throw it away because we, it gets bad and we waste it. And nobody likes that, particularly with prices now. 
Uh, so um, that's where we start in thinking about that plan and actually planning out uh, some menus. And you know, we're gonna we're gonna do that in a little bit, uh, just to have some hands-on practice to try and think about planning through a different lens. So look at what you have on hand. Check out those store advertisements, you know, that bundle of junk mail that comes. All the advertisements are in there. Mine just came. I'm checking out who's got the best turkey prices right now, right? Because uh, I've got to get my turkey and get that thing thawing. So it's ready next week. Um, but not only, you know, those that come in the mail, um, check out what is, uh, you know, online. If you have a loyalty card, and this, we'll talk about this too in purchasing, but if you have a store loyalty card, make sure that you're kind of getting registered and set up uh, because you might even see different deals through those, those store apps than you do within the, just the, the paper advertisements. And use a planning worksheet. You also uh, receive one of those in your packet. I'm going to be passing those out later here uh, as we get into that activity. But that's just an idea. You could do it on a, you know, just on a, that sheet. You could do it just on a calendar. I know when uh, my kids were young, I had a big menu board that, that I could wipe off and I planned every week, you know, the week's menus and put a star by what night was a, a band concert or what night, you know, was 4-H meeting or whatever things that I knew I was going to have to be planning around to make sure that I was on target to have, you know, a timely dinner on the table or if it was going to be a mobile dinner out the door. So planning whatever works for you. Take a look at your recipes. Um, you know, and maybe if you're feeling that boredom thing, check out new ones. That's something else I love about the MyPlate website. There's a subsection called My MyPlate or My Kitchen. My Plate Kitchen. That's what it's called, My Plate Kitchen. And they've got actually a searchable database uh, that it's like, oh, I need something. We're bored with chicken. I need something new to do with chicken. And so you could just search chicken and find some, you know, some new ideas there. Um, but then too, you know, what other thing? I know I see lots of recipes scroll across my Facebook feed. Um, I've got this giant Pinterest board of recipes that I'll probably never get to each and every one of them. Um, but, you know, utilize, you know, different tools like that. And then as you're planning and thinking about this cook once, serve twice principle, just think about, you know, flipping a switch in our brain and about how we even term, you know, somebody mentioned leftovers. Okay. We've gotten to where we call them planned overs in our house. Cause I'm thinking that way. Uh, and, you know, as we, as we think about planned overs, uh, I'll actually, we'll package things down into what, what we call at my house, happy meals. It's a lunch size container of the leftovers. We've called, started calling them happy meals because I'm happy I don't have to pack a lunch in the morning. I don't have to think about that. It's ready to go uh, as soon as I clean up from dinner. And then extenders, uh, you know, what, and that's, this is kind of what I call act two cooking. Uh, you know, what can I do as a, as a stage, you know, act one meat, for instance, and then how I can make that change into something different along the way. And we'll explore that a little bit more in just a bit. So that's planning. Get your plan together and work the plan. Then we get on to purchasing, okay? For number one rule, eat before you shop. <laughs> Am I right? Who's, who's gone to the store hungry <laughs> and spent more money than we thought we would? Um, and for those who have little, little kids, you know, try not to, try not to take them along. Or I, I'm like, I try not to take my husband along because I can end up with more things in my cart when he's along too. So if you can shop alone, um, and, uh, you know, just that way you, you remain more in control. So eat before you shop, shop alone, stick to your list, you know, hopefully while you've been making that plan, looking at what we uh, were going to plan out for many years, look what we had on hand. And that's how, you know, we develop that list that we're going to take to the store. And then we try to stick with it. Um, and certainly there are things I've, all, I've gotten to the store and go, oh, walk by something and go, that didn't make the list, but I know I need it, uh, you know, and I'll do that. Uh, but I try very, I really, really, really try to rein in that impulse purchasing. You know, and that's one thing I do have to say about the pandemic. When I did the, the uh, 
online shop, you know, ordering, order online and go to pick up. I found that I saved more money. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah. <laughs> Um, and because uh, that whole impulse purchasing just kind of, I didn't do that. So um, it might be time for me to re-examine that and just think about that as a way to stick to your list. And two, uh, when you find it, and I, I'm sure you probably have, because I know it happens to me, I'll find myself wandering around the store searching for something. You know, they be, be advised that they kind of resell that store real estate about every six months. And so when you go wandering around trying to, to find what you're looking for, when because they, they've rearranged the store, it's because, you know, kind of it's been that time to, uh, to update and, and who's going to pay premium on the real estate of the store shelves. So that can affect us, our ability to stick to our list. Um, comparing unit pricing, you know, that's one of those basic shopping things that uh, we like to remind people of. Certainly, if you're doing the online ordering and pickup, you don't have the ability to do that on everything. Some of them, some of them, you can find that uh, still, you know, as you're doing that, your virtual cart, um, different stores will do better about having that information right there. So you can kind of compare that. But um, that's a key way that we can think about actually saving you know real money is are we getting the best value because that kind of ties right into the next thing buying in bulk and repackaging sometimes when we buy larger things I'll buy you know I'll buy the big package of chicken breasts because it usually is a cheaper unit price far more than we need in our house but that's when I'll repackage it down into convenient sizes and so and then re and freeze it uh, in a size that's suitable for us that I can just grab. And typically I just, I will pa uh, package uh, chicken breasts just in individual like uh, baggies and then into a large bag so I can grab out what I need. Um, pork chops kind of the same way uh, so that I'm, and not buying, you know, freezing the whole lump thing uh, in, in, in the freezer. And just a note on just, it's a good idea to do that because honestly, the packaging that the, you know, a lot of our meats come in, they are not, you know, they're not airtight and they're not designed to freeze in. And so you will have some quality loss uh, if things get shoved to the back of the freezer and you end up with freezer burn just because it's not designed for, for, you know, long-term storage. So buy in bulk and repackage uh, and think about how you can get that, uh, that best, best purchase ability. Uh, coupons and loyalty cards, what comes in the mail, what's loaded to your app, uh, that, that happens when you, when you use that loyalty card. Um, and so just thinking about, about keeping, you know, keeping that, uh, top on your mind because, you know, some, sometimes those things just will show up in your, uh, app coupons as opposed to something that might come in the mail. The other nice thing about really kind of using that loyalty card system is the, you know, the, those programs keep track of what you buy. I even get coupons for fresh produce uh, because it's keeping track of things that I buy and it'll send me coupons for baby carrots or for um, fresh broccoli. So different stores do different things. Um, so just check out what, make sure you're getting all the advantages that you can from yours. And then, you know, some of you may, I, I've, I've done this too. I've been really good about clipping those coupons and then not keeping them organized. So find a good way to keep them organized. You know, those, you know, just an envelope or a, a, like a check uh, recorder divider, those little expandable folders that you can kind of uh, organize them by category. Um, because it's great that we have them, but if we don't remember to use them, we're not saving any money. And then, you know, think outside the store. Uh, and this is especially appropriate during the, during the summer, during growing season, and make sure that we're remembering to visit our farmer's markets. Uh, and make sure that we're thinking about those roadside stands, uh, you, you know, at the market or going to uh, a, uh, a roadside stand. Uh, on our resource list at the end of the slideshow, uh, I'm gonna point you to several websites including the, the Show Me Food website that's a, a MU extension initiative that is great for pointing you to local farmers markets.
Okay, now it's getting down to saving time, hopefully, okay, the prepare section. Uh, and thinking about how we can, again, use our energy efficiently. Um, anybody do meal prep? Do we have meal preppers online in the room? Anybody kind of spend the weekend, uh, you know, kind of prepping up for a week? Not so much. I go through spurts. I can say that. Do we have any, any po folks? We have uh, somebody who says they meal prep lunches for the week and one other person who said yes. Okay, so meal prepping lunches. I mean, and like I said, you know, that's a great way to, especially if we're trying to get kids out the door to school or just get out the door for work on time ourselves. That's a great way to, you know, to save yourself some time and money uh, when, when we're, you know, taking a lunch to work. And you know, like I said, you know, it might be one of those things that helps us that that whole planned over thing again, you know, changing our, our mind the way we think about it. So but even prepping basic ingredients in advance that can be used for multiple things, um, chopping onions, chopping peppers, uh, you know, and and getting everything done and bagged up, you know, for for either to use in a recipe or maybe it's just bagging up individual uh, veggies and fruits to be able to put quickly into a lunch. Because remember, we're falling way short on that half a plate of fruits and vegetables. So prep in advance. If you're going to freeze things, like I do, I do a lot of peppers and onions myself. Uh, you know, because that's one thing that goes into just a lot of things that we, that I cook. But I'll chop them up. You know, either chopped to go into a recipe or kind of, you know, sliced and julienned like I would use like in fajitas primarily or stir fry. Uh, so getting those um, done up and then packaged individually, again, small containers, or if you wanna put those, I recommend freezing out or to lay those out on, a, on like a cookie sheet to freeze solid and then bag them. That way you don't end up with like one big frozen lump of onions or peppers. So that's a way to make sure that you can use it easy on the back end. Make two, freeze one, you know, casseroles, chili, soups, um, lasagna, okay? Uh, my, and, and that's one of the things that I would do on a lot of things like that. But I tell you, my, one of my best hacks that I've started doing when I make lasagna, I don't even make it traditionally anymore. I don't put it in a pan, you know, with the layers. I make what I call lasagna roll-ups. Cook the noodles, put the filling on there, roll it up like you would a cinnamon roll, put those out on a tray, freeze them solid, and then bag them. And then if I want to have lasagna, pull out however many we need, get the sauce out, and bake it. Um, but again, laying them out flat on a, on, a, on a, like a cookie sheet so that they can freeze and then bag them. And when, I'm, when I make those, I make a lot. You know, just like when I make meatballs, I make a lot and freeze them so that they're there for quick grab and goes. Um, even, you know, things like rice, particularly brown rice. We like, we like brown rice. We're getting that extra fiber, those whole grains. I'll cook, it, cook up a bunch and freeze it in like two cup containers. So that, it, because brown rice takes a little bit longer to cook, most likely. So, um, just think about ways that you can do that just to make a convenience food on your own. Meatless Monday, uh, that's a way to add, ver add some variety. One of the things that we do know within like the, you know, that protein section on that my plate, um, you know, we, we can think beyond just meats, right? So we wanna, if we wanna try to, you know, just gear ourselves towards doing a little bit less meat, you know, we do Meatless Monday a lot at our house. And that's what we're drawing, you know, any kind of beans. Um, maybe it's just, you know, breakfast for dinner and it's egg night, you know. So just some things, again, to think about variety. Planned overs, talked about that. Involving others. And I say this particularly for those that might have small children around. Um, one of the things that, that I've seen not only with my own kids, but with kids that we've worked with in our, in our 4-H youth programs is if we involve them, they're more inclined to be, they're invested and they're more inclined to try something that they've, that they've prepared. And, I've, uh, and if you can even push that back even to help them growing, and we see this in our gardening programs, seeing kids who said they wouldn't eat a tomato on a bet till they grew one, 
saw, grew their own tomatoes, saw it grow, turned it into salsa, and all of a sudden they like tomatoes. <laughs> so get them involved. Um, when my kids were, were younger, uh, I had, we, we claimed kids, kids cook Friday. Mom got a vacation from cooking on Friday. So I just said, you plan what you want to do. You search through the rec, you know, through the cookbooks or just think what you want to cook and tell, we'll make sure that we have on hand what you need. But Friday nights, I'm off and you get to cook for me. So, and, and they've learned great skills and, uh, Talked to my son a little, a little bit tonight as he was driving home. He was had his chili supplies ready. He was going to go home and make chili, and he was going to have chili for a couple of days. So he's even using my principles. And then, you know, always kind of challenge ourselves to try something new. We talked a little bit about, some of you mentioned, you know, some mealtime boredom. So, you know, let's try something new. Maybe, you know, step outside of our comfort zone. Um, and uh, again, you know, with kiddos, though, we want to always remember if we're going to bring something new in, we always need to be sure that we're pairing that with the familiar. And so that, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be one of those things. They've got something new, but also something that they're familiar with just to keep things, uh, keep things interesting. You know, and we've all got, you know, like I said, recipes flowing across our, our Facebook feed or on our Pinterest boards. Uh, that's a, a great way to to check those. But, um, you know, some and, and even just, you know, uh, you know, just search recipes on, you know, fish recipes. If you're trying to get fish, you know, we'll get plenty of ideas. But again, I, as I point you to the, the My Plate website, the My Plate Kitchen, um, those might be a little bit healthier than just the, the standard ones that, that might be out there using just a whole lot more, you know, fat or sodium or sugar, the things that we do need to be reining in. Then we want to think about storage. Once we put in all that effort, let's make sure that we're going to be storing and, and handling things properly for that, you know, for those planned overs. Uh, and I especially like to talk a bit about this as the holidays are coming up. Um, I mean, I can think of plenty of times growing up where the Thanksgiving feast, any of the Christmas, any of the holiday feasts after dinner, everything sat out all afternoon. Don't do that. Don't be that person. Uh, we do want to be remember that we put things away uh, in a timely manner, uh, you know, so that we can keep food safety uh, in mind. The very last page of, of that, uh, well, the one I have here in the room, I kind of had the, the planning, shopping, and, and time saver uh, tools, but the very last page on, on our set in here is a refrigerator and storage chart that comes from the uh, foodsafety.gov website. You know, that's one of the things that as we, as we get around the holidays and even throughout the holidays, I get a lot of phone calls of, you know, I've had this or we're cleaning out someone's grandma's house or something. Uh, that's a lot of times where those calls come from. And we found, you know, this food in the freezer or this food in the shelf, how is it safe? Um, and so that gives you some good ideas for freezer and refrigerator uh, uh, timelines for storing food. Um, cabinets, you know, pantry storage, that's a much longer term. Usually we're, we're good for, uh, you know, tw eight, to, eight to 12 months on most things that we'll store in the pantry. So, but um, as far as our leftovers, do those quickly within two hours. We talk about the two hour rule uh, for food handling. And that's also inclusive of though, the time that it spends in your car, the time that uh, as you're walking around or walking around the store in your car, getting home on the counter, and then uh, when it goes into preparation. So if we think about all those times cumulative, that two hours can, can add up quickly. So we do want to be mindful of that and make sure that, you know, we're not responsible for making anybody sick, particularly at the holidays. Things like soups and stews and sauces you say, that are very dense and voluminous and really anything. We want to try and you know, spread that out as much as we can. But soups, stews, sauces, I always recommend put those into like a cake pan so it can the volume can spread out. And then once it's cooled, get that into your storage container. Um, as we think about, you know, the holidays coming up, you know, with the turkey, get that sliced up. Don't put the, the big turkey leftovers into the fridge. Get that off the bone. Package down, uh, you know, any of those side dishes. 
uh, so that we can spread that volume out and then use those timelines on that storage chart. As we think about freezer storage in particular, uh, if we, you know, as long as the freezer is operating correctly and you know, hasn't had any type of power interruptions, you know, the, it's going to be safe, safe, even past the, the timelines mentioned on the chart, but we will start to get a quality issue that can go along with long-term freezer storage. So, um, and that's where we get things like freezer burn from things that aren't in, in, you know, properly packaged. And that's where we can run into its quality issues though, not safety. And if you've ever had things that have had been freezer burnt, they don't taste good. It, it does taste bad. Um, on the foodsafety.gov website, there's a wonderful tool also available as an app on, uh, on you know, your, your mobile devices. It's called the Food Keeper. And you can uh, search by category, you know, to find out recommended storage guidelines. So that's a, a really, really handy tool that I would recommend you check out. So now we're thinking a little bit about energy, you know, <laughs> our energy and, and our actual physical. Do we have any, any questions, comments, or anything that's come in, Beth, through our, our moment folks? Anyone here? Not from online. Okay. All right. All right, so thinking about our tools, you know, what are what are the tools that can make this whole whole thing uh, easier for you? Um, you know, and I I just listed up there the ones that are kind of at the top of my list in my slow cooker, and then I call my fast cooker or our, you know the pressure cooker either, you know, the one that was my grandma's that I don't use so much that sits on the stovetop or the new electric one that gets you know, used a lot more at my house, those electric pressure cookers. Um, those are two that get used a lot at my house. Um, air fryers have become really, really popular. And I always like to mention to people, if you have a convection setting on your oven, you have an air fryer. And even the newer uh, ovens are starting to even use, the, use that terminology. But if you have a convection setting, which just is basically the fan that circulates that hot air. That's basically what air frying is. It's a circulation of super hot air. What's nice about the air fryer, it's a much smaller unit so that heat and, and air circulates just a whole lot more efficient, efficiently. Now, it may, you know, that, that may or may not fit the size of your family. They do come in, you know, different sizes. And the one that I have uh, is actually, it almost looks like a mini oven. It is more of a, a door that opens where a lot of them have the basket that slides in and out. Um, toaster ovens. You know, and then we start to see all the crossover combinations of all of these. There are, are some of those multi, uh, multi-function things uh, that, that cross the lines. Even blenders, there are cooking blenders that you can cook in, like a cook a soup or something, and have a, have a heat activation. So um, Christmas is coming. Maybe you should you know include some you know efficiency tools that can make your job um, easier. And this is where I'd like to hear you know if you have things that have that you use in your home that lighten your load, you know, some tools and tricks. While we're waiting for people to respond to that, um, somebody had asked about the recording being available and it will be um, put up on our YouTube channel. And I put the address uh, in the chat for those of you online and I will send it out in the email after the fact as well. Perfect. All right. So practice time now. Um, and this is where, you know, those of you online, um, I've given you a couple, you know, a couple ways that you can use this tool. And all again, all of these you'll be able to find through the resource list. But um, the create a gr grocery, ugh, I can hardly say this, create a grocery game plan, kind of weekly planning sheet. Um, and, and the one that you see online, you know, is much prettier than the one that we have printed in black and white here in the room. Um, but uh, that's just a, a tool that uh, you know, we, uh, I want to just set my time, I'm going to set my timer on my phone and I challenge you, hopefully you've had a, you had a chance to pull that down. 
I'm going to set a timer for two minutes and I'd like you to plan at least two days of meals that, and, and think about these meals, you know, that, that you're going to put down on paper through that lens of how can we do this as a, you know, cook once, serve twice, two, three, even times even, and change it up along the way. Okay. So two minutes, two days worth of meals. And if you get more than that, if you're on a roll, keep doing that, keep going. And I set my timer and I'm going to pass them out here in the room. All right. There you go. Here you go. So as we say, thinking about the lens, you know, cook once, serve twice, you know, how, and, with, and changing it up. And as you're thinking, you know, and if you have questions for those at home, uh, please drop those in the chat. We did have someone mention um, in response to your previous question, rice cooker. Rice cooker, ah, yeah. My daughter uses hers a lot. That's one thing, you know, a lot of times people say, you know, what's the best appliance? You know, what that is like the best appliance is the one that you will use. <laughs> So it it kind of you know depends on what kind of plastic it is. Some of them are are designed like to take microwave temperatures. Some of them are not. Um, I as as I've done replacement over time, I'm get going more towards glass. My husband and I have that that debate a lot. <laughs> But we've got some still from, you know, that uh, that are designed for, you know, for reheating in the microwave. Okay. We've got a couple responses online. Okay. We've got chili and taco soup, vegetable lasagna, white chicken chili, and then... Um, I like veggie and rice casserole with fruit as dessert. Um, and then somebody said, I went from microwaves to steamers for everything. Okay. Yeah, I mean, think about when the microwave used to be the, you know, the secondary go-to, you know, appliance. And I don't, I don't think that's, that's quite, uh, you know, quite the way it is uh, anymore. So as some of these other things have come along that kind of, you know, just make our life easier and more convenient. Great ideas, though, on, on those kind of those planned overs. Um, and so I kind of I, I kind of wrapped these two questions together as far as, you know, turning into that cost uh, idea. So here's here's kind of, you know, my my uh, kind of standard list of things. How can we take some of these act ones and I put kind of my standard uh, you know, ones in here of what can happen. What do you do with a roast chicken? What do you do with leftover roast chicken? What are some of your favorites? Salad. Chicken salad. Chicken enjuladas, kind of my go-to. We had chicken. chicken soup chicken online. Uh-huh. Um, I like to throw it in rice with vegetables okay so just like a chicken and rice casserole then yeah okay spaghetti with marinara sauce and i'm keep you know so and and just as as a clue i'm telling you i i it depends do i make it am i making spaghetti happy meals <laughs> when i package them up or am i going to think more creatively beyond and my yeah, so what are some things you could do with the leftover spaghetti outside of just spaghetti happy spaghetti meat sauce happy meals Here's
here's mine. I have a specific pasta salad, not my general pasta salad that I use with the twirly noodles. Uh, and, but I've got a, a specific pasta salad I just think tastes better with spaghetti noodles. And so that's kind of mine. And then we'll do mini pizzas. Okay. English muffins is typically my go-to. Okay. Ground beef. Everybody's got ideas for ground beef. So just give me all the ground beef ideas. Because I'm thinking here, this is what, when my kids were in college, I would buy those, those super big chubs at Sam's and I'd brown it up and package it up into to like one pound containers, you know, pat bags so that I knew that they could, I could try to set them up for, for quick and easy rather than always calling for pizza. We've got taco salad and taco soup. Mm -hmm. Meatball sandwiches. I like to put it on pizza. Pizza. Yep. Stroganoff is one of our big ones. We have got a ham. I've got a hamburger stroganoff recipe, and I've got like a, a round steak one. You know, so two different recipes, two different slants. Goulash is a, fa a favorite at our house. Pork chops, leftover pork chops. Sometimes they're not great, right? Okay. Kind of do a stir fry. Okay. Pork fried rice is kind of our go-to, but stir fry close behind. Yeah. Somebody said breakfast casserole. Oh, great idea. Great idea. Yeah. Cause sometimes that's one thing. Pork chops are just one of those that, you know, particularly if they're on the thicker side, they may not be as good second time around. They tend to get a little bit more dry. So be thinking creatively. Salmon, trying to get that fish in at least once a week, twice a week, they tell us we need to. If you have leftover salmon, what do you do with it? In the salad. Salad? Or salmon patties, you know, and, but then again, I keep, I keep canned salmon on the shelf specifically for salmon patties. It's one of, that makes it one of those quick go-tos. Um, but yeah, if I've, I've got the salmon filet, uh, you know, and, but salmon on, you know, just on a salad is, is good. Is, that's usually what we do. Uh, but sometimes I, I change it up and just do salmon patties from fresh salmon. And it's really, it's really good. It's way better than the canned salmon to do salmon patties from the, the fresh sal uh, salmon. And then just good old roast beef. Hot roast beef sandwiches. Turn it into stew. Turn it into, you know, a, uh, that's another one I've done like an enchilada soup, you know, kind of, I've done that with the pork chops too. Uh, pork chops, black beans, kind of that Southwest twist. Um, so two things, you know, two good ways to, to kind of angle that out. So it really does start to start with that plan, changing our lens, the way that we're thinking and uh, just trying going about it with a plan of how we just simplify our life. Someone online also said salmon with tuna and turn it into burgers. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I fact, in fact, I think that, you know, I think it's on uh, Iowa State Extension website. I go to their their uh, recipe site a lot, and I think they've got a really good salmon burger and a tuna burger. I think that's where uh, there's one that's called a blackened tuna patty, you know, and you know, one of those the good to do in a cast iron skillet and get that good crust on it. So um, great ideas, and I love you know hearing other people's ideas because that kind of we can all benefit then from you know from hearing that. I told you that I would point you to some resources. Uh, these are the ones that, that I kind of really draw upon a lot. Of course, I've mentioned the myplate.gov. From there, you can get to the MyPlate kitchen and also at the kind of just at the top of the banner, you can click directly to the Dietary Guidelines for Americans. 
read more about that. Uh, but also check out their print resources because every one of, of these fact sheets came from from that the the start simple and they've got just a, they've got a lot of great ones they've got them for different uh, uh, age uh, age uh, age cycles you know life span so from prenatal to older adult and everything in between just some specific things to try to to focus on for different age groups to get maximum dietary quality. There's great tools on there for you know, re, minim, you know, reducing sodium, fats, and sugars, and increasing water consumptions, making better beverage choices so that we can steer away from things, you know, sugar-sweetened beverages. Uh, the foodsafety.gov is where your refrigerator and freezer storage car, uh, chart came from, and that's where you can find uh, that uh, Food Keeper app. I pointed you to uh, uh, one of our uh, partners, you know, other extension colleagues out of North Dakota State University, a uh, personal friend of mine, has a great fact sheet series at, out of North Dakota Extension called Now You're Cooking. And uh, that includes lots of super simple recipes within her fact sheet series. And she's got things that kind of focus in on breakfast or, you know, are fussy eaters, you know, kind of getting some new ideas for eating, working with picky eaters. So encourage you to check out uh, North Dakota Extension website. I mentioned the Iowa State uh, website. I should add that to this, uh, but Iowa State Extension also has a great recipe finder. Med instead of meds.com. And you'll notice most of, uh, most of the, the ones, the sources that I use, you know, are EDU, GOVs. Uh, so don't be alarmed by the dot com. Uh, Med instead of meds is a uh, partnership between North Carolina Extension and their State Department of Public Health and part of their Eat Smart, Move More. Uh, it, uh, initiative, but it's focusing strictly in on a Mediterranean style of eating, which includes lots of fruits and vegetables, lots of whole grains, uh, and they've got some great, um, you know, uh, short videos kind of honing in on their, their principles. And the last page of the uh, recipe, kind of our planning worksheet, includes kind of their version of the uh, kind of the, you know, Cook this, buy that is you know, their planning sheet and the, the uh, shopping list all in one. But they've got some great websites uh, or recipes on their website. I was at a conference in September um, and we had the opportunity to tour their test kitchen where they are doing their recipe development. And they served us a really tasty recipe using eggplant. And so if you don't think you like eggplant, I would uh, encourage you to search out um, Caponata, I think is how it's said. It's on their website. Go on their website, search for eggplant. <laughs> um, our uh, FNEP Family Nutrition Education Program out of MU Extension is next down there, as well as a couple of our uh, sp focused uh, websites on project specific things. The Seasonal and Simple is kind of the precursor to the Show Me Food, and will probably uh, kind of they'll probably kind of permanently merge at, at some point. But the Seasonal and Simple uh, dot info. Yeah, that's a, that seems like a strange one. People are kind of confused by that, but I'd encourage you to look that up. Bookmark that because, again, can point you to uh, farmer's markets, recipes for uh, different food or for, for different produce and has a search list by topic. You know, you can pull up acorn squash. What, what can I do with acorn squash or butternut squash? And then, yeah, the show me food one that we're trying to just really build and populate to help connect you to locally grown food. So encourage you to check those out. And that is my contact information. Um, if anyone would, you know, needs that, drop me an email if you have any questions after tonight. Uh, any other questions that we might have before we finish out? All right. Well, we give people a chance to to type some questions in online in case they've got them. Um, I did uh, put a link to the evaluation for tonight's survey or for tonight's program in the chat. Um, that just helps us know not only how we did, 
but also um, if you know you can let us know things like other topics she would be interested in seeing programs about uh, whether it's in person or virtual or hybrid like this um, for those of you who were online I, I know there were some people who um, registered um, a little bit later after I had already sent out the handouts I will resend those along with the link to the evaluation to everybody um, but I'm not seeing any questions in the chat. So unless we've got any other questions here, I think we are good. All right. Well, I wanna thank you at home for taking your time to, to tune in and thanks for being here. Um, hope you gathered, gathered some good information and some tools to make your life a little bit easier in the kitchen. Thank you again, uh, Denise, for this wonderful program. Um, I think, I know I will find the handouts to be <laughs> useful because I'm bad about uh, when I get to the store, not having a list of what I need for what I want to make. Um, well, I, I, I left out the biggest thing is like, don't write it on paper, put it in your notes in your phone. I rarely <laughs> leave my house without my phone. So, so I like to keep my, <laughs> my grocery list on my notes. <laughs> Uh, and thank you to everybody for coming, um, both in person and online. And uh, the other thing I'll mention, uh, for those of you who may have joined late or want to go back and review, um, this will go up on our YouTube channel. And I did uh, put that address in the chat a little bit earlier, um, but it is um, YouTube at uh, sorry, not at youtube.com backslash MCPLMO. Um, it usually takes us a couple days to get it up there. Um, and I will include that address um, in the email with the handouts and the, and the survey, but you'll be able to go back and review it. Um, so thanks everybody for coming and have a great evening. <laughs>